I think he's up on me, so some payback is definitely in store. Welcome to the Real Appreciation Podcast. I am David Claire Bennett, and I am beyond thrilled to be joined by an actor, writer, and director who has brought some of the most intense and unforgettable characters to life, from the Collector movies to Interstellar to Criminal Minds to Insidious. Please join me in welcoming to the show the incredibly talented Josh Stewart. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here with you, man. Thank you so much for gifting me your time to sit down and chat with you today. When I say it is an honor, man, I mean it is truly an honor. I appreciate that, man. Hey, look, uh, I'm just as happy and honored to be here with you today, man. So uh, thank you very much. Dude, thank you. And let me just, we were talking about Marcus Dunstan and our love for him off camera. We may or may not like thank him a million times because he's just such a great person. (laughs) But let me just start off by saying how great of a person he is for connecting us and what an incredible guy he is. I've told him this personally before. If he ever needs anything, anything at all, I'm just a text or phone call away. And I hope I get to personally and professionally work with the both of you someday in this crazy world of film and cinema. It's uh, that's uh, look, once you're in Marcus's world, that's that's very, you know, that's a highly likely scenario. Speaking of him, uh, you two have created some unforgettable horror moments together. So what is it about your collaboration that tends to work so well? You know, man, I, I, I don't really know what it is other than we just hit it off personally straight away. You know, beyond Marcus's talent, um, you know, which is undeniable and his love for the genre. And there's no one that's uh, more knowledgeable about anything and everything horror and and just film in general than than that guy but the only thing that surpasses him uh that surpasses his uh his passion and his talent is his heart i mean the man is just an incredible human being um he's wide open there's nothing in the world that he wouldn't do for his best friends his closest friends his family or complete strangers, you know what I mean? There, there's nothing, um, there, there, there's no area that he would come up short on. So, you know, the, the collector, when I first met him, it was one of those crazy things where, you know, they had had several people, I think, either attached or people that they wanted to play Arkin uh, before I came along. It literally was one of those things, like I auditioned on like a, monday tuesday i had the job on wednesday and on thursday friday i was on a plane to start filming on the following monday the next monday so it was just you've got the job now let's go and you know basically locked myself in a in a hotel room for two days in shreveport louisiana with the script um and got to work but then you know just being with marcus um again just who he is as a person and and to me if you're going to spend that amount of time with somebody on set and you're going to uh you know i'm going to put all of my trust in them creatively and in their in their vision about what they're going to do they you know i always say that a director is the actor's eyes i'm not going to tell you i need another one i'm not unless something you know happens but to me, it's always like when they ask me, do I want another take or whatever? I'm like, brother, you're the eyeballs, man. This is this is for you. So you tell me when you're happy. It's not about me or what I want. So beyond that, I mean, to get to that sort of place where you trust what it is that they're doing, it's it's who they are as a person. And I think just right away, you know, anybody who's ever met Marcus or been around Marcus, you know, within 0.2 seconds, what kind of human being he is. There, there's no like, I got to see, I got to figure this out. I got to spend some time to wonder. And it's like, no, you get it straight away. And I just got him. We got each other straight away. You know, I bought into what he was doing, uh, bought into him as a person, bought into what he was doing and was like, let's just go. And it just worked. You know what I mean? So that's uh that's pretty much how i came into the marcus dunstan world let's talk about the collector some more marcus has already given me the go ahead in my last interview with him and announced that a third collector is finally happening and of course we know you're going to be back reprising your role as arkin 
How freaking excited are you, Josh, to finally return to the Collector's Twisted World? Yeah, man, look, um, there's a handful of characters, two or three characters that I've played uh, in my career that um, that mean the most to me, and Arkin is one of them, uh, for all the reasons of, you know, who he is and what the story is, but with, with Marcus, the whole, you know, the whole experience, um, you know, I think the history of how we made the first one and then how it fell into this this kind of crazy world with the the you know dimension and what the Weinstein brothers to Mickey Liddell's company and you know for the collected and you know there's just so much story there to tell and I think we're all excited that finally the book has been reopened um allowing us to climb back into the world you know uh as far as i know you know through my conversations this is all very new and very you know the the start of it all but look man uh you know th those films are not easy to make but they are the most rewarding when you're sitting there watching it with uh with a, a theater full of fans you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. We do what we do because we love it. We can't do what we do uh, based on what other people tell us, or we're we're subject to all the good and all the bad and everything in between that people have to say. But it really feels great when uh, when they dig it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it makes it all worth it. And to be able to do that with with your pals, um, you know, it, it's priceless, man. Like you said, I know things are still fresh and very new, but what are you hoping to achieve with this next installment of The Collector? Um, you know, I, I think just, look, I, and it's not even what I'm hoping that will come. I know what's going to come from it. I know that Marcus is going to stay true and he's going to find some interesting and insane way to, to keep the story rolling. Um, he, he, he never fails with that. He and, and Patrick Melton, when they're writing, they, they never fail in, in capturing that essence and carrying it from one film to the next. So, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, uh, that story growing in all the different ways on, on all the different branches that we know it can, you know what I mean? in all the ways that we know those two guys can come up with. So um, I, I can't wait, you know, I mean, I think look personally from a character standpoint, I'm just looking forward to hitting the collector in the mouth again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think he's got <laughs> one or two coming. You got some fish hooks ready, right? Oh man. Yeah. The, yeah. He's got, I, I think he's up on me. So some payback is definitely, uh, is definitely in store. We know from some stills online that you guys were previously attempting the film, the the collected, but let's be real, things unfortunately seem to have gone awry, and all these years later, the film never came out, never got completed. Are you allowed to talk to us about what went wrong there and what exactly happened? You know, to be honest with you, I, you know, we, we filmed for, uh, I don't know, seven days or eight days, something like that. We filmed, um, we, I mean, we started, we were filming. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I, I don't know precisely what happened behind the scenes. Um, I, and I think that is, uh, you know, and quite honestly, I, I don't really care and don't want to get into it. Uh, I, I don't want to get into all the business of it, of, of what was happening, but, you know, I, I think, um, at the end of it, um, I, I really have no idea. Just that, you know, all I know is I was waiting for a pickup one morning and the pickup never happened. And I'm calling in going, um, my ride isn't here. Uh, you know, they were supposed to be here 15 minutes ago. What's up? Should I drive myself? <laughs> and they're like, it's not happening. And then it ends up in court uh, what in some capacity. I, and I have not read one single transcript. I've not read anything about, you know, anything that's happened. I just know it's in the free and clear now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were filming. Screw whatever happened. You're going to make an even better one now. I just know it. Yeah, you, you know, look, man, you, you know, it's 
it's kind of like that sports mentality of like, you know, if you're playing football, you have a job and your job has an assignment and you do your assignment, you do your job and you take care of your business. And that's all you can do. I can't control everything else. And and certainly the film business is one of those things that, um, you know, that was beyond my pay grade. Nobody was sharing with me firsthand uh, what was happening um, specifically. So anything past that is hearsay. And I'm just like, well, that means nothing to me. I'm not one of those people who speculate and and help spread rumors and and talk about all the things that this or that like it has nothing to do with me other than i feel like we all got uh sort of you know uh we had this amazing opportunity to go make something cool and that it ended, ultimately ended up not happening and i'm just sad that that was the case you know what i mean there's so much work whether it's this film or any other film you know it's it's look it, it's a miracle that a film ever gets made i mean any film at all the the amount of um, hoops that anybody has to jump through to make happen is nothing short of amazing. So once you get there, it's like you've already won the game on some respect. And now the job is to go out and make something presentable and something great and something that's memorable. Um, so, I, you know, to be honest with you, I've been a part of a few films that have fallen apart. So it's not shocking to me, you know, Look, man, we're all just stoked and it's finally here and it's finally able and, you know, people are willing. So what that's as as an actor who's just participating as an actor, you know, that's all I could ask for. And that's all we want, man. I'm going to go ahead and segue into another movie that you were in known as The Dark Knight Rises. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. But you even shared some scenes on screen with Tom Hardy and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. What was it like working alongside Tom Hardy? Tom is, uh, you know, he's just, a, you know, um, a generational talent. You know what I mean? He's, um, he's just so good at what he does you know you you never know what's going to come out you never know what's coming you never know um what he's going to bring in the best possible way you know I, I think any artist that can approach something that's got confines in the form of a script and, and in the form of a director wanting a specific thing the guys just kind of mastered uh the ability to take every bit of real estate inside those parameters that he can and just create the things that he comes up with. I mean, if you look at the characters that he's played and the, the, the jobs that he's done, I mean, you know, it's just, it's nothing short of amazing, you know, and to be on a set like that with, with him and with, with, you know, all the other actors, and, you know, with Chris, it's like going to film school, you know, you know what I mean? It's, you just know that when you're a part of something like that, you're a part of something that's going to make a lasting effect or not just theater goers, but cinema for his, in, in history, you know what I mean? Like the, you, you can feel it and everybody, you know, like I was saying about buying into something or someone or someone's vision everybody's bought in and there's a, an army of people making those movies happen. You know, um, everybody's committed, you know, to the nth degree. So, you know, there's no time to, you know, play around. Everybody's there and everybody's ready to work. And, you know, you, you show up and you, you bring your, uh, your a game from, from the jump, you know what I mean? But, you just know that you have someone in, in Chris who you can trust implicitly. Um, and you just go on, go on for the ride, man. Working with Christopher Nolan is a significant milestone for any actor, given his reputation for being one of the absolute best to do what he does. Take me back to what was going through your head when you, would, when you learned that you would be working with him. Well, I got the call first. Um, 
what I auditioned for was just to play this guy who delivers Bane in the beginning of the movie to the aircraft and put him on the plane, essentially. Uh, that was the entire role. Um, so uh, I got the call that I got that job. I was supposed to be in the UK for, uh, I think, two weeks, two or three weeks to do the job. And that was it. Uh, it was literally the opening sequence. Uh, and then, I, I, you know, I don't know, sometime later before I left, we got a phone call and um, my manager called me and said, listen, uh, Chris thinks that Bane needs a lieutenant. He needs a right hand man. And he wants uh, that to be you. He wants you to do it. Um, you got to trust them. He's going to work it in in every way he can. It's not currently a, a character that's scripted throughout, um, obviously. But he's going to make that. And if uh, you're down, we want you to do it. And it would be run a picture, basically. And um, and I was like, but yeah, well, obviously, of course. But yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, so, you know, when I first started acting, it was um, the Thin Red Line, Memento and Fight Club that sort of like changed the way I looked at um, film. You know, growing up in West Virginia, uh, it was John Wayne and Clint Eastwood movies or anything that was played on Turner Classic, you know, you know, the Turner Classic movies. Um, so that sort of you know those, those films sort of shifted the way i saw everything and so to be able to work with fincher and then be able to work with nolan um it, that was just everything just the way you know he he conducts his business he he, he knows what he wants he's written the thing so he he knows it inside now you know, he hires people to do their job and then he lets you do your job and only gives you what he needs you to have as far as direction is concerned um, to do your job. You know what I mean? He he hires really well. He, he knows he's got this amazing ability to see in you or the, the costume designer or whoever it is or Wally Fister, you know, back then um to do what he needs done but then he lets you have your creative say in that you know what i mean he um he's hired you to do your job and he wants you to do your job and he gives you a space to do that so to me it was there's almost like a simplicity about the way he does it in this amazingly complex world that he's creating. And to me, that's, you know, on any film set, uh, that's priceless. The dude comes in ahead of schedule and under budget on everything he makes. So he's incredibly efficient and just incredibly generous and just a, a, a good dude you once had a recurring role in the popular show Criminal Minds. Talk to me about your experience working with such a star-studded cast like Matthew Gray Goobler, AJ Cook, and so many more talented people. You know, man, that show, um, I, I did a show before that in New York called Third Watch, uh, which was where I got my start. Um, and Ed Bernero, who created Third Watch, was, uh, after Third Watch was canceled, was, uh, became the showrunner for Criminal Minds when it started. So a lot of us actors who were on Third Watch had guest starred on Criminal Minds early, early on, like early days. And I was doing a, a show called Dirt at the time. And they said, hey, come over. We'd like you to, you know, Ed called up and was like, hey, won't you come and do an episode with us? And of course, I was like, yeah, whatever you want. You know, Ed is just the, the best, the best dude ever. And it was a lot of the same, you know, producers, the DP came over and was now directing from Third Watch to Criminal Minds. So it was kind of like a bit of a, a small homecoming, almost like a reunion, so to speak. Right away, I hit it off. I mean, back then it was Mandy Patankin was still there. It was before uh, Joe had come on the show. And just immediately hit it off with everybody. I mean, that show... Um, the group of actors 
I, I, I've not been a part of anything. Maybe Third Watch. I mean, we we all were super tight on Third Watch, but that group of actors, everyone's super cool. Everyone was like a family. Everybody was very welcoming. Everybody was, you know, down, uh, you know, they were down for the plan, man. So um, it was just easy. So every year it seemed like I was going to do an episode just showing back up. Uh, and it was, it, that feeling of a homecoming, even after Ed was gone, even after some of those people, uh, that I knew from third watch had moved on, you know, a handful of them are, are still there that I've literally known longer than anybody in the business, like Stacy Hart, the UPM and Glenn Kershaw, who's, in the, who's an EP and director of the show. Like Glenn was my, you know, DP on third watch. So it's like, those were my beginnings. You know what I mean? So it is literally like a family reunion. As we wind down here, I think it is so important to showcase both gratitude as well as appreciation and i want to be a bit vulnerable with you here josh personally right now and i'm not trying to fanboy you on you or anything like that but i've got to be real with you josh you were the reason i actually became an actor back in 2010 2011 that's crazy to to think about man when i was in high school i was obsessed with the collector i think it was uh it came out in 2009 i remember being obsessed with the collection i even pre-ordered um <laughs> Uh, the Hunted and The Neighbor, like those kind of movies. I was one of those kind of fans. And I actually told Marcus this on the last one. I had done a high school essay on what do you want to do after you graduate high school? And I had a dream project I wanted to do because I've always been a screenwriter. And that was write a movie or be in a movie with Marcus Dunstan, Patrick Melton, and Josh Stewart. So for me to be in this chair right now, virtually across from you, man, is making the 16-year-old David shed some sentimental tears right now. So Josh, thank you for being an inspiration to me all these years later. Hey man, listen, I so appreciate that. You know, it's look, it's hard, you know, when we do what we do, we kind of have to do it for ourselves in in and not in a selfish way, but in ourselves for ourselves like you get together with a group of people and you're collaborating on something, right? And you're making a piece of art. We have to do that outside of what we think the perception is going to be or how people are going to react to it or what they're going to take. We hope it's going to be good. But if we put all our eggs in that basket and that's all we're, we're just trying to please, I, I don't believe that we're going to make art that's worth anything. And if we're listening to all the good that people are saying about us, we have to believe all the bad that are pe you know people are saying about us as well. So to go and do that, and then to have people respond to it in a positive light, that's all an artist can hope for. Like if I, if I were a painter and made a, a picture, um, you would hope people would, would like it and dig it, right? Th this is no different. So, so to me, that's like the ultimate, you know, um, the, that's the ultimate compliment. So, Thank you very much for that, man. I, re I really appreciate it because to me, that's that's the best possible outcome. You know, it's it's like I was saying, like looking up to, you know, it wasn't really actors that I looked up to before, but watching, you know, Memento and the Thin Red Line it was like, wait a second. This this is different. There's something about this that's completely off axis and is putting something in me that, that I can't really explain. And now I've got to go do that. And there's no, you know, I'm a dude from West Virginia, man. I didn't do theater. I didn't, you know, I've never done anything like that Same before. <laughs> but yeah, right. So, yeah, man. I appreciate you, man. Like I said, I'm all about gratitude. And every day when I wake up and before I go to bed, I say three things I'm grateful for. So I want to reverse that question onto you, Josh, and ask you, what are three things that you are grateful for? Man, uh, number one, God is good. I mean, first and foremost, uh, you know, he's done uh, wonderful things for me, man. Uh, so first and foremost to that, man, uh, Jesus has been good to me. Um, you know, second, my family, uh, 
you know, there, it's nothing, all of it is nothing without family. Nothing, um, you know, what, what what is anything if we can't share it? Anything great can be great, but if we can share that with somebody, then, I mean, that's the, the highlight, you know what I mean? And, and third, you know, I, I guess with that comes just being able to do something that, um, that, you know, for all intents and purposes, people were like, that's nothing you can do. To be able to do something and call work, uh, writing and, and making movies, uh, making television shows, um, you know, it's just, I, I can't believe it. You know, I, I'm just so grateful and so thankful that one for the, the God given talent and the, you know, the, the courage that, that that instilled in me to to go and and chase it and and just do it you know i, I think um so often we we live our lives thinking you know we we've got to fit into this we've got to fit of that we've got to do what these sort of social expectations are but you know in reality i i don't owe anybody anything when it comes to that you know, I need to be a God fearing person and 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 walk in those principles and 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 be happy doing it and doing what that is leading me to do, and everything else uh, falls by the wayside. You know, and I think it's took me. You know, it, it took me uh, even after making the jump and moving to New York and 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 chasing that. I'm really just now starting to really appreciate it and really starting to to feel it and starting to live that. You know what I mean? That was my favorite answer of the entire show. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, brother. Now, where can people find you online? Oh, man. Uh, I'm not too good with all that stuff, but, um, you know, the the Instagram, I guess, is probably the best way to 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 keep up or Twitter with what, um, or it's not even Twitter. See, there you go. X. We call it Twitter here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still Twitter, man. I mean, what is this? Come on. Um, that's the best way to see what's coming. You know, I've got some, uh, some writing coming out. That's not in the, uh, the, the film world. So stay tuned for that. That's coming, you know, the short stories and, and some novels are on the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, already in the can, man. I will find your socials and I will list them in the description below for anyone who wants to follow Josh Stewart online. Dude, this has been wonderful, man. And I'm telling you, I've had such a rough year. Uh, I told you it was five months or so recovering from an attempt at ending it all. And it's crazy how now we're here growing this podcast together. And let me just say that you agreeing to do this was definitely a highlight of the year for me. And on such a personal level, I say thank you again. Hey brother, I appreciate it, man. And everything it's one day at a time. And, uh, you know, and I think you're doing, uh, obviously, you're doing pretty well, man. So trying, one, one day at a time uh, and, and being grateful. That's all we can do, man. That's Absolutely. all we can do. And thank you for having the, uh, you know, the courage to share what it is that you have, uh, you've lived through so others can see and benefit from that. There is such a stigma attached to, you know, I think mental health in, in so many areas, you know, and look, anxiety is something that I, I've dealt with, uh, you know, for, for a while. And there, it's good to see that that is changing. And guys who are making the ultimate sort of uh, courageous steps and talking about the things that like, like you're doing makes it easier for people like me to be like, okay, this is not such a crazy thing that I'm feeling and talking about. You know what I mean? This is not, um, you know, it doesn't make me any less of who I am by, by having this conversation. So for that, I say thank you to people like you, man, because look, if if I can, you know, open the world of acting to you, you can open up a world to me that's uh, way more important than than a movie. You know what I mean? That's way more important than a television show. So to me, there's nothing more courageous and nothing more uh, inspiring than people like you, brother. Brother, I appreciate that so, so much. I'll 
If I could put that on a wall and remember it for the rest of my life, I will. <laughs> you just have to watch this video, man, and you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am David Claire Bennett. This has been Real Appreciation. He is Josh Stewart. I speak for everyone when I say how excited we are to see you kick the collector's ass again. Please follow Josh on the socials listed in the description. He's absolutely worthy of the follow, and you're worthy of reminding yourself that you matter and deserve to be happy. This is a safe spot here. Like Josh said, this is such a safe spot. Protect your mental health because you absolutely matter. We'll be back next Friday with a brand new episode, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single one of our videos. Thank you again, Josh. I'm David Claire Bennett. You are Josh Stewart, and we are out. Thank you, brother. Go easy, man.